guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the software tour of the HTC Touch Pro 2. Now, what you're going to find is the software is very, very similar on the Touch Pro 2 to how it is on the Diamond 2. Um, in fact, there are only a very few amount of changes that have been made to the software experience. We're going to cover everything fully in the review, but right now we're going to go through the main things that are different. So to start, we finally have true TouchFlow 3D in landscape. It's been a long time coming. If you remember, TouchFlow 3D on the Touch Pro was just really a row of icons when you opened up the keyboard, but not the case on the Touch Pro 2. We finally have true to life TouchFlow 3D in landscape. And what it does is just reorients things on the screen. You get a little button here, which expands the list of um, of icons on the screen that you can go through. So things are kind of arranged differently, but they are not too different. So we can go into favorite people. You've seen that before. We'll go right into text messaging. And here is a text message from John. And I'm going to tap on the screen to open that up. And here's the new text messaging screen. And we also saw this in the Diamond 2. It's a much more elegant way of communicating with people that will put it into this nice little threaded view. Now also, part of this um, Part of this screen, if we zoom back out, well, let's go back in for a sec and flip into portrait, is the unified communication screen. And we're going to talk more about this in the review. We covered it in the Diamond 2 review. The idea is that when I'm in the unified communication screen with John, I can see all the emails that I've sent with him. I can see any calls that I've had with him. And I can also see some Facebook information, although the Facebook integration isn't that great. It lets you add a picture for the person and also update their birthday on the contact card. So far I haven't seen that much more um, functionality out of this. And finally, if you go to the button on the left, you get to see the person's uh, you know, name and address or any other information that you've entered in. Again, I'm not showing that now because of security information, but we're going to cover it fully in the review. Great concept to have the unified communication screen. Okay, and of course we have email here, and we have calendar, and the calendar is fantastic because it actually integrates with the weather. So if I go to today, I get to see the weather in Philadelphia, which is where I am. If we go into landscape, and screen rotation is super fast, by the way. I'm sure you've seen that by now. Um, you have to scroll a little bit. Uh, if we go over to the internet, of course we have push internet. And the idea behind push internet is that you can set up a few different... Um, web pages to preload. So let's say every day at four o'clock you check your stocks. So you have yahoo.com slash finance preload itself every day at four o'clock. And the way you add a new push page is quite simply you add in the address, you specify the frequency there, and it will get it ready for you. Now you can also specify how often this this works if you go to schedule settings. So let's say you don't want the page to be pulled down um, during the weekend. So you turn on Monday through Friday, you leave off Saturday and Sunday, and that way you're not accruing data charges when you really don't need to be looking at a particular website. And over here is stocks, and stocks have been redone a little bit. It's actually the same stock screen that you had in the HTC Touch uh, HD. So if we go to Starbucks here, we get to see stock details. Now here's where the landscape integration doesn't work too well. Um, if we flip over to landscape, things reorient, but it requires you to scroll. Things still don't fit on one screen. It would have been nice if, nice if they put the graph over to the left and put these um, these buttons for the various time intervals to the right of that and put all this information all the way over to the right because it's kind of annoying having to scroll whereas when you're in portrait everything is right there on the screen. Of course we have photos and video and we've seen this before and uh, the camera on the Touch Pro 2 as we'll see in the review is quite fantastic and so we can use the zoom slider to move in a little bit and to move out, or you can flick your finger to the right to see the next picture. And that's actually a little video. And the the scrolling from side to side is much smoother than it was in the Touch Pro. Um, you can go halfway and stop. Before it was kind of this weird artificial animation, but now it's a lot smoother and crisper. And um, you can also zoom in by double tapping and zoom out but the zoom slider is there for you. The zoom slider will only work in Opera Mobile and in Photos, unfortunately. It won't work in Skyfire if you get that, or um, in other programs. So its, it's functionality is quite limited to uh, Opera Mobile, Google Maps, and, and Photos. So let's continue our way in TouchFlow 3D. 
course you've seen the weather tab, but now that we have a massive WVGA screen, we can see the forecast right on the screen. The Touch Pro actually made you go to another screen before you saw weather. But here it's integrated all into the same screen. And finally here we have settings, which bring some new things. If we tap on sound, we get this super elegant display that allows us to change the various um, settings for sound on the device. We can slide up the volume. Now when you press the start menu button or the windows flag, you're taken to the HTC program launcher, which is, it's okay. Um, it allows you to add programs and customize things, and if you press remove, there are some things that are locked, like these ones at the top are locked. So if I really want to have Opera Mobile right, th right at the top, I can't do that. It's got to be right here. This is where you can start customizing. Now the only way to disable this HTC start menu is to disable TouchFlow 3D, which is kind of silly. There should be a way to just turn off this menu. I actually like the standard Windows Mobile start menu because it allows me to see more on the screen at one time, more icons, and uh, it's a little bit more customizable. I think this is not very, um, not very user friendly. And we can go to all programs, but again, to, to get to the bottom of the, the huge list, we have to scroll a lot. It's not like the um, standard Windows Mobile program menu where you get lots and lots, uh, lots and lots of icons, and you can see everything that's on the screen at one time. Now something that is new is the conference call feature. So I'm going to bring that up now. And you get to the conference call feature by flipping this little button in the bottom right corner. Now what we can do is we can go down the list and check off people that we want to have in a conference call. And the more you check, and it seems that you can check as many as you want, you get a little counter down here where it says conference. <clears throat> now if I tap on conference, it's going to take me to another screen that's going to walk me through connecting multiple people to the conference call. So basically it's like a conference call wizard. Of course, with cell phones you can conference call many different people. And you can do that if you go to menu and add caller. But in but sometimes if you're adding lots and lots of different people, it gets a little bit cumbersome. So this conference call wizard makes it a little bit easier to do that. And you couple this with the straight talk function and we demonstrated that in the last video and you have a really compelling solution for having calls with multiple people and using the device as a speakerphone and things like that. We'll cover this more in the review coming up soon on pocketnow.com. So that's pretty much it for the software on the HTC Touch Pro 2. Again, the software is very similar to what it was on the Diamond 2 with a few um, exceptions. And we'll cover everything fully in the review coming up on pocketnow.com soon. It's great to finally see true TouchFlow 3D in landscape. Although the implementation is kind of strange, you always have to go back to this button to bring up the row of icons. And in some screens, um, the screen space I don't think is optimized perfectly for the landscape because you have to scroll a lot, whereas in portrait, you don't. For the Touch Pro 2, HTC has added a little bit of eye candy to the messaging inbox. So if you tap on a message, it will fade in, watch. So I'll do that again. So this isn't really that functional, and it actually probably slows you down a little bit, but it's a small way that HTC has helped to make this a little bit more of a refined experience. Also, uh, lending to better usability or, or improved aesthetics is the, um, the new soft key menu. So they're much larger, kind of like in Windows Mobile 6.5, although a little different looking. And this is throughout the entire operating system. You get these large menus. And finally, if you tap the notification area up here, you get a notification box like this. So this is a nice little tray that'll accumulate all of your SMS notifications, email notifications, call notifications. It'll tell you if you're connected to Wi-Fi um, or if there are any networks detected. And from here, you can access the wireless networks and go to your Wi-Fi screen and things like that. So coming up in the full review, we're going to have speed benchmarks, battery life tests, and screenshots of pretty much every aspect of the HTC Touch Pro 2. Uh, so check out pocketnow.com for that full review. It will be up very shortly. That's it for now.